Intel's new B580 GPU originally arrived with a bit of a splash. Big YouTube channels were almost framing this card as some sort of price to performance savior. When I took a look in Star Citizen, the only game that really matters, I kind of found that performance was quite spiky. Here is the frame time graph for the Intel card. And again, you'll notice there are a fair few spikes. And this is something that I saw everywhere that I tested with this card, just out of nowhere at random points, there'd just be a bit of a stutter. And ultimately I said, probably don't buy one of these now, wait to see if these issues get fixed by either Intel or CRG. But the plot has thickened since that video. And even if you're not particularly interested in this GPU, this is a pretty interesting look at driver overhead. Now we start this sorry story with a quick explanation of how to test GPUs. In order to allow a graphics card to show its full potential, reviewers use the fastest CPU available. So when all the big tech YouTube channels reviewed the B580, it was paired with the Ryzen 7 9800X3D. But unfortunately, in this case, that meant that everyone missed the fact that if you pair this new Intel GPU with a slower CPU, things start to go downhill pretty quickly. Hardware Canucks seem to have been the first channel to work this all out and test this out. Then Hardware and Box followed up with a couple of videos of their own testing and they both found that there seems to be some sort of driver overhead that causes performance to drop in CPU heavy games when you're using a less powerful CPU. Now, what better CPU heavy game to test this in than Star Citizen? So let's take a look at this with a 5800X UD for the mid range and then an 11400 for the low end. Now, I've already got this data from my original view using 324.3, a horrible patch, not performing well, but we'll use the data and we'll build on that with the other CPUs. But you can see here that the B580 and the 3060 are basically performing the same, running around Lawville. Now, we're using the 3060 because it's got 12 gigabytes of VRAM as well. So both cars will not have any VRAM issues, hopefully, as we drop to the minimum spec kind of system with only 16 gigabytes of RAM at the end. So that's our baseline. What happens when you use a 5800X 3D? Well, you can see that the 3060 and the B580 have swap positions. And for some reason, the B580 is losing a fair bit of performance compared to it. The 5800X 3D is still the bottleneck completely here. Both cars could perform better, as we've seen with the 9800X 3D. The CPU is the bottleneck. But for some reason, on the 5800X 3D, the B580, has lost a bit of performance. Now, is this down to CPU overhead? Because the architecture of the Intel card is just uses more CPU resources to get pump out the frames. That's kind of the theory going on. But actually, let's be honest with you here what's happening. This could also, in this case, be down to another issue, I think, with the B580 card, is that it's only got PCIe Gen 4 times eight lanes. So it's only got eight lanes. And the motherboard I'm using here, my old trusty B450, only has PCIe Gen 3. So potentially, as we looked at in the first main review of this, that could be causing some problems. But don't worry, the next set of results are completely clean and perfect. And there is nothing that really saves the Intel card. You see here that even though the 3060's performance is pretty horrific in going around level with the 11400, Things with the B580 are even worse, and this is using PCIe Gen 4, so we've got no issues really with uh, PCIe lanes or anything like that. This is now just two GPUs under the same conditions, and you can see that the Intel card is significantly far behind. And if I show this on a frame time graph, this is the 10 runs that I did to this, all plotted. You might think, well, oh, that doesn't look that bad, but if you, start, if you look at the range, you'll see that the biggest spike is 7,000 milliseconds, AKA seven seconds. And you'll notice that there are lots and lots of uh, spikes there that are above one second. And even actually the one second <laughs> spikes, there's loads of them. So when I say performance was horrific and unplayable under these circumstances, it really was awful. There seems to be this CPU driver overhead issue with this card. And so, is this something that Intel will fix? Is this something that they can they can eliminate? I'm not convinced because I wonder if this is just the architecture of the car. This is just how they built it. We've seen already that there's a reliance on resizable bar. We know, not to go too deep into it, we know that 
NVIDIA also has some sort of CPU overhead when using certain graphics APIs. And we know we're talking things like hardware schedulers versus software. It's a complicated topic, but this is just because it's an issue with this Intel card. And the problem is, the major problem is that this is a card that you might think looking at the price and looking at the performance that you could drop in to an older system to use as a, a decent GPU upgrade. So say, say even you're using my kind of minimum spec uh, recommended GPU, the 1660. You might think, well, this is not too expensive. It performs a lot better. I'll just chuck it into my system and performance should be better. And unfortunately, if you are running an older system with an older CPU, a slower CPU, anywhere probably in this range, anywhere from like a, I mean, 3600 from AMD, again, I don't know how much faster you'd have to get on the Intel side to suddenly eliminate these issues. I imagine the kind of 12th gen i3 with four cores, that would also struggle in this sort of case. There are potentially a lot of kind of mid to lower end CPUs that basically this card will just not run very well on. And uh, it's a shame because again, it, at, at the start when the original re reviews came out, everybody was praising Intel, saying this is a great job. Uh, you've done a, a wonderful thing. It's cheap and it performs well. It, it compares with the 4060, 6700 XT that I tested in the original review. But in reality, this is kind of dead in the water, I think now, uh, because yes, it's performing fine with a 9800 XD, but if you've bought yourself a 9800 XD, I would imagine you'll be wanting to pair it with a faster, GPU than this. So yes, can Intel fix this? I don't know. And I'm doubtful that this will suddenly get fixed. And what would I recommend? Well, yeah, you're probably looking at the, if you're trying to keep it as cheap as possible, the 3060, despite being a bit slower than the 4060 has got 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which probably is helpful going forward, but probably the winner in this sort of price range is still the 6700 XT. And there are obviously uh, other cards from AMD, like the 7600 XT has got 16 gigabytes of VRAM, that would be fine. There's all sorts of issues in this sort of price range in terms of you need to have plenty of VRAM on the AMD side. The AMD, the, in, the Nvidia cards tend to not have enough VRAM. It's a bit of a mess. We thought this was the card that was going to save everything. We thought I thought this could be a good recommendation for kind of 1080p star system performance, but as as things develop. My original recommendation stands really, don't buy this card and wait and see.